Hi everyone, my name is Farah Juma and I'm a software engineer at Red Hat leading security for the Wildfly project. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to secure an application deployed to Wildfly on OpenShift with OpenID Connect. For anyone new to the Wildfly channel, we share videos about interesting topics related to the Wildfly project. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Let's jump into today's topic. What is OpenID Connect, or OIDC for short? Well, OpenID Connect is an identity layer on top of the OAuth2 protocol. It allows a client to verify a user's identity based on authentication that's performed by an OpenID provider. So why is the ability to secure Wildfly applications with OpenID Connect important? Well, the advantage of OpenID Connect is that application developers don't need to worry about user management at all. So no need to create and manage user stores. Instead, the OpenID provider handles authenticating users for us. This is particularly useful when deploying applications in the cloud, where we might not have access to persistent storage to store user information ourselves. Wildfly 25 added the ability to secure applications using OpenID Connect without needing to use the Keycloak client adapter. So today, we're going to take a look at how to secure an application deployed to Wildfly using OpenID Connect with the new native support. Let's take a look at the example application that we're going to be using today. We're going to be using the simple web app OIDC application from the Elatron Examples GitHub repo. Now this application just consists of a simple servlet that outputs the principle associated with the logged in user. Now in order to secure this application with OpenID Connect, just two steps are needed. So the first thing that we need to do is add an oidc.json file to the web inf directory for this application. So as we can see here, I've actually already added an oidc.json file to this repo. So let's take a look at the different options that can be specified here. So first we have the client ID. So that's the client ID that we're going to register with our OpenID provider. Next, we have the provider URL. So this is just the URL for the OpenID provider that we want to use. Now here, I've specified this using the OIDC provider URL environment variable. And if this value isn't present, then this is the URL that will be used by default. Now we'll take a look in a bit at how we're going to configure this environment variable on OpenShift. Now the rest of the options here are actually identical to options that could be specified before using the Keycloak client adapter. So now that we've configured our oidc.json file for this application, there's just one more thing that we need to do in order to secure this application with OpenID Connect. So in particular, we need to configure the auth method in this application's web XML file. So we need to set the auth method to OIDC. And you can see that I've already configured this for this application. So now that we've configured our OIDC.json file and we've set the auth method to OIDC in our web XML file, 
the new native support for OpenID Connect will automatically enable the OpenID Connect authentication mechanism for this application without requiring any other server-side security configuration. Now we're ready to deploy our application to Wildfly on OpenShift. So to do that, we're going to use the OpenShift Developer Sandbox, which lets you get started with your own OpenShift instance quickly. If you don't already have an account, you can create one and it's free to do so. I already have an account, so I'm just going to click on Start Using Your Sandbox. So as you can see, I'm in the developer view and I don't have any resources configured yet. So the first thing that we're going to do is configure the OpenID provider that we're going to use with our application. So today, we're going to make use of the Keycloak OpenID provider. So I'm going to click on Add to Project, and I'm going to search for Keycloak. So as you can see, there are a bunch of different options here, and the sandbox actually gives us access to the enterprise version of Keycloak that's called Red Hat Single Sign-On, or RHSSO for short. So we're going to pick the RHSSO 7.5 version that also includes a PostgreSQL database for persistent storage. So I'm just going to click on Instantiate Template. Now, you need to specify the application name that you want to use for this instance. I'm just going to keep the default name here, which is SSO. And then I'm going to click on Create. So as you can see here, we can, in the topology view, we can see that the SSO instance and its corresponding database are now starting to launch. So this is going to take a couple minutes. Our SSO instance is now ready to use. So we're going to click on Open URL and we're going to go to the admin console. So as you can see, we need to provide a username and password in order to access the SSO admin console. Now this username and password was automatically created for us when we launched our instance. So to find the values that we need to use, we're going to go back to the topology view in our sandbox and we're going to click on Edit Deployment Config. So I'm just going to scroll down, and as you can see here, we can see the SSO admin username and SSO admin password. So these are the values that we need to use in order to log in to the admin console. So I'm just going to copy paste these values over, and then we can sign in. So now that we are in our Keycloak admin console, the first thing we're going to do is add a new realm. So I'm going to click on Add Realm, and I'm just going to call it My Realm. So now that we've created our realm, we're going to add a new user to this realm. And this is the user that we're going to use to access our Wildfly application. So I'm going to click on Users, and I'm going to click on Add User. So I'm just going to create a new user called Alice, and I'm going to hit Save. So now we need to set a password for Alice. So we can go to the Credentials tab, and enter a password. Now that we've set up our OpenID provider, the next thing we're going to do is deploy our example application to Wildfly on OpenShift. So to do that, we're going to make use of the Wildfly Helm chart. So let's go back to our sandbox. 
and let's click on Add to Project again. So this time we're going to search for Wildfly and we're going to click on Install Helm Chart. So first we need to choose a name for our Helm release. So here I'm just going to keep the default name, which is Wildfly. Next, we need to specify the configuration for our Helm release. So I'm just going to get rid of this default configuration and we're going to specify our own config instead. So the first thing that we need to specify is the information that will be used to to build our application. So we're going to add a build section. So first, we need to specify the URI where our application is hosted. So before, we saw that our application is part of the Elatron examples repo on GitHub. So we're going to copy the URI from there. So you can see I'm in the Elatron examples repo, and I'm just going to copy this URI. Now, because we only want to build the simple web app OIDC application, we're also going to specify the context directory to use. So here I'm going to specify simple web app OIDC. So now that we've specified the information to use to build our application, the next thing we're going to do is specify the information that will be used to deploy our application to Wildfly. So we're going to add a deploy section. Now, as we saw before, our application contains an OIDC.json file with an environment variable specified. So if we go back and take a look, as we saw before, we have a provider URL that's specified using an environment variable, followed by auth slash realms slash my realm. Now, this trailing portion of the URL is something that's specific to the RHSSO or Keycloak OpenID provider. And notice that this my realm value corresponds to the name of the realm that we used when adding a realm from the RHSSO admin console. So when deploying our application to Wildfly on OpenShift, we want to be able to specify a value for this environment variable. So this environment variable is meant to indicate the URL for the OpenID provider instance. So in our case, that would be the URL for our RHSSO instance. So we can find that URL from the topology view. So from the topology view, we can click on SSO and we can copy the root from there. So now in our deploy configuration for our Helm release, we can specify the environment variable that we want to use. So in this case, the name of the environment variable is OIDC provider URL. And the value that we want to use is the URL for our RHSSO instance. So now that we've specified uh, the information that can be used to deploy our application, we're now ready to click on install. So again, this will take a couple minutes. Now our example application has been built and it's been deployed to a new Wildfly instance in our sandbox for us. So now, before we try to access our application, there's just one more step that we need to do. So specifically, we need to register our application as a client with our OpenID provider. 
So I'm first going to copy the URL for our Wildfly application. And we're going to go back to the RHSSO admin console to register our client. So from the clients page in the console, we can click on create. And I'm going to create a new client called my client. And I'm going to hit save. Next, we need to specify the valid redirect URIs for our application. So I'm going to paste in the URL that I copied, and I'm just going to add the name of our application. So simple web app OIDC followed by star. Now, because we haven't done any SSL configuration, I'm just going to use HTTP for this example. Next, I'm going to hit save. So we have successfully registered our client with our OpenID provider. Now, one thing that's really important to note is that soon this client registration step, um, it will be possible to automate it instead. So you won't actually have to do this manually. So stay tuned for that. So now that we've finished registering our client, we can finally try to access our Wildfly application. So I'm going to paste in the URL that I copied before, and I'm going to add simple web app OIDC. So now um, we're at our application's homepage. So this page is unsecured. So what we're going to do now is click on Access Secured Servlet. So as you can see, we have been redirected to RHSSO's login screen. So that tells us that OpenID Connect has been successfully enabled for our application. So now let's try to sign in using the user that we created earlier. So I'm going to specify Alice as the username, and then I'm going to specify Alice's password, and then I'm going to click on Sign In. So as you can see, we've reached our servlet that we saw earlier, and we see that it's output the principle that's associated with the logged in user, and that's Alice. So this means that RHSSO has successfully authenticated the user Alice for us, and we've been redirected back to our application now. So that means that we have successfully made use of OpenID Connect to secure our example application. In today's video, we looked at how to secure an application deployed to Wildfly with OpenID Connect without needing to use the Keycloak client adapter. We also looked at how to configure an OpenID provider instance on OpenShift, and we also deployed our application to Wildfly on OpenShift as well. I'm going to add the link to the example application that we used along with links to a blog post and some documentation in the description down below. So make sure to check that out. Hopefully this video was useful and make sure to subscribe to the Wildfly channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks and see you next time.